Hello. Thank you for joining as you come in. It is Friday, 10.30 a.m. Central Standard Time as Facebook gets the word out that we are live. As you come in, say hello. Share to your page. Invite somebody on. All right, let's do this. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Father, we exalt you. We magnify you. We look unto you, the author and the finisher of our faith. Father, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We invite you <clears throat> into this Facebook Live, into this time of sharing. We just bless you, Father, because of your faithfulness and your goodness towards us. We honor you and we reverence you and we ask that you come in this time of sharing and speak with us, Father. We invite the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, fear of the Lord. We invite Holy Spirit in. Thank you, Father, that you would uh, give us what to say on this Facebook Live to encourage your people as you have anointed us to do. So we just bless you, Father, for those that will watch live and those that will watch the replay. We thank you, Father, because you do all things well. And we submit to Holy Spirit as he leads and as he guides us into all truth. Hey, guys, welcome to this Facebook Live. Welcome to those that are new to this platform, to those that are watching the replay, to those that may be watching on YouTube. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you are on Facebook and you have not yet liked the fan page, Sherry Downs, this is the page that we go live on. So if you want those notifications and you want to be notified whenever we share a video or come on live sporadically or whenever we share any content, you definitely want to like and follow the page. If you are watching on YouTube, you definitely want to subscribe to the channel and you want to turn your post notifications on so you're notified whenever new videos are posted. I am Sherry Downs, author, life coach, mentor, speaker, podcaster. If you have not yet subscribed to Kingdom Touchdowns Podcast, on your Apple device, cpnshows.com, Google Play, Amazon, YouTube, wherever you listen to podcasts, you want to do that. We will share strategies, insights on how to walk in victory and how to access the life that Jesus Christ died for you to have. If you have not yet shared this video, you want to share it to your timeline, your network, invite somebody on. God bless you. Thank you for coming in here with us on today. When you come in, say hello and let us know where you are watching from. Let us know that you are on here with us. Again, I am Sherry Downs. Welcome to this platform. God bless you. All right, let's get into it now that we've gotten all the preliminaries out of the way. Listen, guys, uh, I did an article about um, uh, a month ago and I shared it to my timeline yesterday. So you want to go look at that article um, and let it just bless you because what we are walking into as a body of Christ is just going to amaze us. It's going to bring us into the place of great fulfillment. Those that have been posturing themselves in prayer, those that have been taking this moment in time, specifically the year 2020, if you have taken that moment to allow Allow the Spirit of God to search you and cause your life to come up higher to the place of submission to whatever God has been speaking in your life. You, you will be one of the ones that are walking into this brand new season of expansion, this brand new season of what God is doing in the body of Christ and in the world at large. Type in the comments, 
I'm brand new. You don't think about those things that are past, those things that are old. The Lord is doing a new thing. Behold, I will do a new thing, saith the Lord, and it shall spring forth. While we are walking into this spring season, get your expectations up for what God is doing. You're going to have to raise the bar. Type that in the comments. I'm raising the bar. Raise the bar and raise your expectations to the brand new thing that God is doing. There is a brand new season that is upon us. There's a brand new season of God's goodness, his faithfulness, the expression of his sons and daughters in the earth. If you have taken this moment in time specifically, 2020, and if you allowed the Holy Spirit to survey your life and you've said, Holy Spirit, whatever areas of my life that I need to come up higher, whatever areas you are causing me to raise the bar, I am willing and obedient. If you have been somebody that has partnered and postured your heart for the year 2020 for that, get ready for prayers to be answered. Get ready for the kingdom of God to manifest, listen, in a strong way. Look for God's manifested hand in your life. Get ready to see the kingdom of God be begin to bring answered prayers, begin to bring for his glory. Type in the comments, it's all for his glory. So we bless you, Father. Even now, we come against any way that the enemy would try to block this live broadcast, any interference in the internet, the Wi-Fi. We just come against that by the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. We take dominion and we take authority over this broadcast and we decree and declare that the word of the Lord that he has placed in my mouth for today is going to come forth in Jesus name. As you come in, go ahead and say hello and let us know that you are watching and where you are watching from. And don't forget to share the broadcast. Type in the comments. I've shared the broadcast. When you share, you are care. When you share, you care. You care about somebody else hearing this message of encouragement, inspiration, edification, exhortation, and comfort. So today, I want to talk about what is in you. Type that in the comments. What's in me, right? What's in you is what matters because that is what God has ordained for your life. Whatever he has placed in you, that's the thing that the enemy wants to kill. What he has placed in you. So you have to ask yourself this question, Kathy, what's in me? We know that Jesus Christ of Nazareth came through Mary. Mary was carrying the seed of promise. She was carrying the Messiah. She was carrying the one that would deliver many. She was carrying the one that would bruise the serpent's heel. And because of that seed, there was a launch and attack against her and against what she carried. So you're going to have to ask yourself some critical questions. You're going to have to do a survey of your life to see what God has placed on the inside of you. You're going to have to sit with yourself and begin to survey what's in me that the enemy doesn't want to succeed. Seed. What's in me that the enemy doesn't want to manifest on the outside of me? What's in me that I need to protect in order to fulfill, listen, the mandate that God has placed on my life? What's in me. Listen, woman. Listen, man. The kingdom of God is within you. When you were adopted into the body of believers, God placed the kingdom of God within you. And that kingdom ignited and that kingdom activated and started watering the purpose and the destiny. You became alive. Those seeds that God placed in you that were not in the right 
a fertile ground became alive. They started opening up. They started budding. So the kingdom of God is within you when you accepted God as your personal savior. So before you accepted him, God had placed seeds in you and these seeds were dormant. But when you accepted Christ and you were adopted into the body of believers, the kingdom of God started being activated and you became alive unto purpose and destiny. The kingdom of God is within you. So I want to answer three questions on today. I want to share three questions. Type in the comments, or should I say three points? Type in the comments, just three points. Just three points I'm going to share with you today. And those points are, What is the kingdom? Where is the kingdom? And release the kingdom. We notice when Jesus came on the scene, he said this, until the days of John the Baptist, until now, the kingdom of God has suffered violent attack. And listen, and the violent Take it by force. Let's look at that particular scripture. He said, from the days of John the Baptist, John the Baptist was the, was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. John the Baptist began to prepare the way for the new way, the new covenant. John the Baptist began to prepare the way for the kingdom of God to transition things, to uh, bring something new, to fulfill the scriptures, to manifest the will of God in the earth. And because the people were hungry for something new, they were tired of dead religion. They were tired of people lying to them. They were tired of keeping the same laws and traditions and not seeing much change manifest in their lives. So when the kingdom began to be preached, the people thronged in. They thronged in. They were trying to hear about this new way. They were trying to hear about the new kingdom that God would usher into the earth. They were trying to hear about the Messiah that, that was coming. Uh, John the Baptist began to prepare the way of the Lord. John the Baptist began to baptize people into the new way. He began to baptize people into receiving Jesus Christ. So here we are talking about what's in you. If you have accepted Christ, if you have turned away from your sins, the kingdom of God is within you, but you have to grow it. You have to allow it to be activated. You have to grow the kingdom. You have to abide in the kingdom. So the kingdom of God, in order to understand and know what the kingdom is, we need to know what it is not. Jesus answered. He said this in John 18 and 36. My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is not of this realm. So listen, the kingdom of God is not anything that we can touch. The kingdom of God is not of the uh, realm um, in the earth. The kingdom of God is not something that's going to be established to the degree that it is an earthly institution. The kingdom of God is what we receive from on high. The kingdom of God is not observable. The kingdom of God is not tangible. The kingdom of God is not pleasing to the flesh. Anytime your flesh is glorified, the kingdom of God is not fair. The kingdom of God that is within you is righteousness, peace, and joy. Listen, in the Holy Spirit, righteousness, peace, 
and joy in the Holy Spirit. That is the kingdom of God. The Gentiles strive after these things. He was talking about things of the flesh. He was talking about uh, going after the flesh, pleasing the flesh. And um, the kingdom of God is not ritual, right? The, and your heavenly father knows what you need. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Did you share this video? Share the video and invite somebody on. And all these things will be added unto you. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added. Type in the comments, I'm a kingdom seeker. I seek kingdom. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Today has enough trouble of its own. So you want to start seeking the kingdom of God. So the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So righteousness, right standing with God, peace, having peace between you and God, joy, having your joy fulfilled, that's the kingdom and expressing that joy, expressing righteousness, expressing peace, releasing righteousness, releasing peace and releasing joy. Uh, the kingdom of God is fellowship with the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God within you is fellowship with the Holy Spirit. When God, God's kingdom abides in you, you reverence, you have fellowship with the person of Holy Spirit. And because Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity that solidifies your adoption into the body of Christ and you become a kingdom seeker. Seeking first, what? The kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? Righteousness, peace, and joy. Now I become a kingdom seeker. I become one that seeks after righteousness. I seek after peace. And I seek after joy when I become a kingdom seeker. What's in you? Righteousness, peace, and joy. Why? Because I seek after this. So then, if I seek after the kingdom of God, Yolanda, I don't seek after confusion. I don't seek after drama. I don't seek after broken fellowship with God. When God's kingdom truly abides in you, you don't want to disturb the communion and the fellowship that you have with Jesus. Anything that comes in your vicinity that is outside of the kingdom of God, you recognize chaos. You recognize confusion. You recognize recognize drama. You recognize when the enemy is causing you. Madison, I'm sorry, guys. Madison, go in class now. No, you're not. Go in class. Sorry, guys. I just got a notification. <laughs> Gotta be mom. I got a notification from her teacher telling me she wasn't on Zoom. She down here where I'm at. Underneath the couch. I gotta be a mommy. And a prophetess. At the same time. <laughs> okay, so let's get back to it. So the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, right? So righteousness, peace, and joy as I commune and come in union and fellowship with the person of Holy Spirit. But listen, I got to stay in that posture and I can't allow anything to break that Union. This is where Joseph ran from Potiphar's wife because he did not want to do this thing against God. And listen, 
Joseph didn't even have the person of Holy Spirit living in him. At that time in dispensation, the Spirit of God will only come on individuals for the work of the Lord. Now in the New Testament, we have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. So if Joseph had enough sense to run away from Potiphar's wife because he did not want to do this thing against God, breaking covenant, breaking relationship, breaking communion, breaking union with God, we have to be ever so mindful of the tricks and the tactics of the enemy that will come to cause us to break union. When asked by the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus replied, the kingdom of God will not come with observable signs. Listen, it's not coming with observable signs because the kingdom dwells in you. So the kingdom of God dwells in man and transforms humanity. Did y'all hear that? The kingdom is going to transform humanity. The kingdom of God is going to transform form hearts. The kingdom of God is going to cause people to love. The kingdom of God is going to cause people to reconcile. The kingdom of God is going to cause people to forgive. The kingdom of God is going to cause people to do right when they want to do wrong. The kingdom of God is going to cause people to put guns down. The kingdom of God is going to cause that leader to uh, repent to his congregation. The kingdom of God is going to cause that woman to come out of adultery fornication. The kingdom of God is going to cause the crack addict to put the pipe down. That is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is seen in the actions of men. You cannot see and observe his kingdom. It says, nor will people say, look, here it is, or there it is. For you see, the kingdom of God is all Ready. Jesus was letting them know, I'm here. I'm already in your midst. I'm already transforming hearts. I'm already creating change. I'm already ushering in a new way of being, a new way of receiving, a new way of seeing. If you want to change, you're going to have to come in fellowship and union with the Holy Spirit. You're going to have to have a relationship with the person. Listen, not just Jesus who gives you salvation and now intercedes on the right hand of the Father. Not just God who gives, who all uh, creation flows from. He is the creator of all. He is the one that gives identity. Not just God, but I need fellowship with the person of Holy Spirit. I need to invite Holy Spirit in my day. I need to invite Holy Spirit to cause me to be effective for the kingdom. I need to invite Holy Spirit and give him the right of way in my life. That is the kingdom of God. That's how it looks. I'm not just interested in God. I'm not just interested in Jesus, but I am interested in all aspects of the Trinity, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, and I respect and honor all three. Then he said to the disciples, the time is coming. Type in the comments, the time is coming. The time is now. When you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you will not see it. Listen, we're going to jump down. It says, do not allow what you consider good then to be evil spoken of. It says the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Listen, this is, this is um, very vital. For whoever serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and approved by men. So when I serve Christ, when I serve his, his uh, death, burial, and resurrection, when I serve him in this way, which is a 
form of worship when I serve him in this way, when I allow righteousness, when I allow peace, when I allow a joy to abide and have dominion in my life, I will then begin to be approved of men. How will I be approved and tested of men? Because my light will begin to shine so men can see my good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. All right, so listen, let's go on. It says, um, Luke 17 and 23. We already read that. People will tell you, look here or look there. Do not go out and chase after them. Okay, so where is the kingdom? Type in the comments where the kingdom is. Tell me. I, I, I already told you a basis, so I want you to tell me now where is the kingdom? Where is the kingdom? In this day, dispensation of time, where is the kingdom? Type in the comments. Tell me. Talk back to me. Where is the kingdom? Where is God's kingdom? In me. Yes. The kingdom of God is within me. The kingdom of God abides in me. Now listen, we can grow the kingdom that's in us, which came as a seed, right? The seed of, we are the seed uh of promise. There are many seeds that are, that's within us that God has placed there, but we have the burden or the opportunity to grow the seeds. And guess what? The seeds can grow and multiply and we can give out the seeds of the kingdom. The seeds of God's kingdom grow as we have fellowship with the Holy Spirit, as we allow the Holy Spirit to take up full residence in every area, type in the comments, every area of my life. Holy Spirit has to have control in every area of your life. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, leaning not to your own understanding in all of your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path for his ways are not our ways. Neither are our thoughts, his thoughts, as far as the earth is from the heavens. That's how far as the east is from the west. That's how far his thoughts are from our thoughts. So we have to have total dependence on the person of the Holy Spirit. For when the comforter comes, he will lead you and guide you into all truth. But I got to let him. I got to let Holy Spirit do that. I got to ask him to do that. I got to give him permission to correct me. I have to give him permission to guide me. I have to give him permission to direct me. I have to give him permission to comfort me. When you want the kingdom to abide. Now listen, you can kill the kingdom within you by silencing the voice of Holy Spirit, by not following the voice of Holy Spirit. If I keep telling you, turn left, turn left, turn left, turn left, turn left. And every time I tell you, turn left, you don't listen to me after a while. Guess what I'm going to do? Uh, 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 um, Shakista, I'm going to stop telling you to turn left. I'm going to stop talking to you. I'm going to stop guiding you because you don't listen to me. Right? So Holy Spirit, you can quench him. You can silence him. You can cause him to stop speaking. So if you want the person of the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you into all truth and to and to direct you, you got to listen. You got to obey. Whoever hears my voice, listen, and opens up the door the day you hear the Spirit of God knocking, the day you hear Holy Spirit knocking, when you hear the Spirit of God knocking at the door of your heart, don't uh, reject him. Don't keep the door closed. You got to open that door and answer. So when he is knocking at the door of your heart to show love, answer and show love. When he is knocking at the door of your heart to forgive, answer and forgive. When he is knocking at the door of your heart to obey, 
answer and obey. Your response grows the Holy Spirit. Your response to the Holy Spirit grows the Holy Spirit. He starts speaking more. He starts directing more. He starts comforting more. He starts guiding more as you respect him. If you don't respect the person of the Holy Spirit, he's not going to work. He's You're going to quench him. You're going to grieve him. You're not going to cause Holy Spirit to have full residence and control in your life. So how do I allow the kingdom of God to grow? How do I do that? By obeying, by obeying the kingdom of God, by obeying the word of God. Okay. It's okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. All right. Okay. So when we are kingdom, all right, we got to release kingdom, right? When we speak words that don't edify, when things come out of our mouth, they flow from our heart. When we speak words, those words flow from your heart. The heart is where the issues of life come from. All the matters of your life flow from your heart. The seat of your emotions, your will, and your intellect. If those places don't have um, uh, submission to Holy Spirit, what flows from your heart may be bitterness. What flows from your heart may be unforgiveness. And that's not kingdom. That is not righteousness. That is not peace. That is not joy. What flows from your heart may be murder. Are you uh, speaking forth murderous words against people? Are you speaking forth bitterness against people? Guess what? Sweet and bitterness cannot flow from the same place. You are going to have to give Holy Spirit control of your mouth because what the enemy desires to do is plant seeds of hatred, plant seeds of confusion, plant seeds of faulty thinking in your mind that that thing gets rooted in your heart. And now the kingdom of God does not control that area of your heart. So out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is going to start speaking. So you're releasing confusion. You're releasing division. You're releasing gossip. You're releasing hatred. You're releasing doubt. You're releasing unbelief. You're releasing things that are not of God's kingdom. You're releasing things that are not of the kingdom of God. Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, you're going to have to discipline. Type that in the comments. I got to discipline. You're going to have to discipline yourself to Take in the kingdom, allow your mind to be transformed by the kingdom and allow your heart to speak forth the kingdom, righteousness, peace, and joy. Whatsoever things that are lovely, whatsoever things that are pure, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, begin to think on these things. Okay, so the tongue. The tongue is an unruly evil, right? When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey, we can turn the whole animal. We're talking about the tongue or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are still Listen, guys, share this video by a very small rudder, the tongue, wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, listen, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. It is it, it, it has power. The power of life and death lies within the tongue. If you can activate God's kingdom which is 
huge, which is supernatural, which is not of this world. If you have to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus, that Christ has raised Jesus Christ from the dead, then you are adopted into the body of Christ. If the mouth and the heart have that much power to bring you into a kingdom that is not of this world, to bring you into everlasting life. Imagine what your mouth can do when you tell somebody, I hate you. I wish you were dead. Imagine what your mouth can do when you say she make me sick. Oh, so is she making you sick? Every time you see her, you know, you're sick, right? So you're accepting sickness on your body. If you uh, speak things with your mouth, you begin to activate that, right? The power of life and death lies within your tongue. So consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire. My God. So if your tongue can set your life on fire, what are you set on fire to? You better be burning with the Holy Spirit. You better start speaking forth the will of God. And listen, begin to cause yourself to renounce those things that go against the purpose of God, that go against the kingdom of God. I renounce this. I come out of agreement with this. I denounce this. I do not partner with this. I do not give precedence to hatred. I do not give precedence to racial division. I do not give precedence precedence to uh, uh, confusion in my life. I break ties with this. I come out of agreement with this. You're going to have to start renouncing and denouncing anything that you have spoken into your own life. Sometimes it's not what other people have spoken over us. It's what we believed with and partnered with our mind and our heart. We can set up strongholds in our own minds by taking in oppression of the enemy. And I'm going to do a video shortly after this. How do you uh, oppose oppression? How do you oppose oppression? How do you combat against oppression? All right. So, um, so when the tongue, okay, so the tongue is a fire, sets the whole, uh, course of one's life like on fire and it, is itself set on fire by hell. Okay, all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human, listen guys, can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. So listen, with the tongue... Now listen to this latter part. Are you listening? Give me some ear emojis if you're listening. Give me some ear emojis if you're listening. Because I want you guys to hear this part. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father. Listen. Are you listening to this part? I hope you guys are listening. If you are watching the replay, give me those ears. Let me know you're listening to this part. And with the same tongue that we praise the Lord, our Father with, those that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. We curse human beings. We curse them with our mouths. We put curses on them. Hmm. who have been made in God's likeness. So you know what this scripture tells me? Every human being has been made in God's likeness. That person that offended you, hurt you, rejected you, said things about you. When you begin to curse that individual or curse at them even, When you get, begin to speak things over their lives that is not righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, 
When you begin to say things that are not the plan and the will of God for that individual, when you begin to speak damnation against that person, when you begin to uh, speak against someone's ministry, what God has called them to do, what God has told them to do, when you begin to speak against somebody that is obeying God, you are speaking curses. You're using that same tongue that you praise God with to curse people. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursings. My brothers and my sisters, it says, this should not be. So stop cursing at your children. Stop cursing at your husband. Stop cursing. At, you know, when I call you curse names, curse names are not good. It's not good. It's not edifying. It tears down when you use those things, those words against people. Or even when you speak it concerning how people are acting. It's not good. It's not edifying. You got to speak edification, words of edification, exhortation, and comfort. If God's kingdom abides in you, that's what's going to come out. If his kingdom's not in you, you're going to speak curse words. If you haven't given the Holy Spirit full dominion in your life, you're going to begin to speak. Who has the seat of that place in your heart? The demonic. The enemy. He has control in that area and you need deliverance. You need to be free. You need to ask Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing that back to my remembrance. We just had a very powerful deliverance session with a young lady at church on Sunday. And while we were um, uh, praying for her and interceding and Holy, Holy Spirit is delivering layer by layer the demonic uh, hold that the enemy had on her uh, in her life. Holy Spirit is revealing things and she's being delivered and, you know, um, uh, demonic spirits are manifesting, coming out. She's spitting it up. But listen, when God's kingdom came, there was joy. Nobody had to tell her, Holy Spirit is in you now, rejoice. Nobody had to tell her to respond in a certain way. When Holy Spirit is in you, I don't care what nobody said. I don't care how people try to glam things up, give excuses. When Holy Spirit is in you, that's what comes out. And sometimes in order for what the end, the oppression. Okay, so when you are under attack. Let me give this because some people say, well, we, you are under attack and this happens. Then you say nothing. When you're under attack and somebody's coming at you and the spirit of strife, a Leviathan spirit, a spirit that wants you to retaliate, a spirit that wants you to come fight fire with fire, tooth for tooth, eye for eye. Then you guard your mouth. Then you keep silent. So that the enemy cannot oppress you. Oppression is ideas, words, thoughts, suggestions. Guess what? That come from the demonic realm. When we accept that and we take it in and allow it to come out of us, it can be a very quick transition. It can happen so fast when we accept that oppression. So let me give you an example. If somebody is cussing you out and they go into town calling you all kind of MFers and this, that, and the other and saying this, guess what the enemy is telling you through oppression? Now you call him this. Now you do this because the enemy wants to stir up strife. So ultimately, Ultimately, somebody is dead. He wants to stir up strife, anger, contention. I don't care. A believer should not be operating in that vein. If you are, guess what? You need deliverance. And if you're saying it's okay, you need deliverance too. It should not be so. The kingdom is within you. What's in you? Righteousness, peace, and and joy. What's in you? The manifestation of Holy Spirit. If the manifestation of Holy Spirit is joy, faith, goodness, temperance, uh, self-control, long-suffering. If these things are within you, these are the things that should manifest out of you. If you have not given Holy Spirit full control of your life, own that stuff. Say, somebody help me, I need deliverance. Stop getting on 
on posts and condoning unrighteousness. Stop getting on social media because you do it, your mama do it, your cousin do it. It's what you grew up with and you're saying it's okay. It's not okay. It's not the manifestation of the word of God. It's not. So if you guys listening live or listening to the replay, if God's kingdom is within you, guess what? MF shouldn't come out of your mouth. You need to come out of agreement with that oppression. You need to come out of agreement with that faulty thinking. Edification, exhortation, and comfort. You know, I coach a very beautiful mentoring group called The Huddle. And we were one day after prayer, I just started telling all of the ladies to begin to edify. I said, speak words of edification. And guess what? It's something that we got to get used to. Because we sometimes, because we've been taught the ways of the king of the world, we don't know how to build people up. We don't know how to speak and edify our brothers and sisters because we're used to cursing people out. We're used to hearing people that are kingdom, not edifying. We're used to people being jealous of other people. So they naturally can't speak and edify somebody and tell them you are beautifully and wonderfully made by God. God has a purpose, a plan, a destiny for your life. There is nothing that you can't do with God. All things are possible. You are the beloved of the most high God. I love you with the love of Christ. And God says you are the apple of his eye. There is nothing that he will withhold from you because you walk uprightly. You you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are created unto good works, whatever, whatsoever your hands find to do, do it as unto the Lord. And Lord says, when your hands find to do it, I'm going to prosper it because we spend so much time using our mouth and our tongue for bitterness, corruption, posting things that are not edifying. God is coming for it. He's coming for it. He's coming for it. In the body of Christ. How can we say we are separate or we are called out of darkness into the marvelous light? When we act like the world. God is sending for sons and daughters that will declare unrighteousness, unrighteousness. He is sending for sons and daughters that will prepare the way of the Lord. He is sending for sons and daughters that have the sword of the Lord in their mouths. He is sending for sons and daughters that are baptized by fire to burn up every place where the enemy is making people in the body of Christ feel comfortable. I want you not to feel comfortable cussing. I want you not to feel comfortable hearing your pastor cuss. I want you to not feel comfortable hearing your mother and your father cussing. I want you to not feel comfortable speaking curse words. I want you not to feel comfortable. I want the Holy Spirit to convict you. I want the Holy Spirit to make you apologize, not just. Honey, can you answer this for me? I don't know who this is. I want to make sure I'm not missing a call. Oh, can it let, let me call her right back. Okay, she wants to call you right back. I'm tell her I'm doing my Facebook live. Sorry, that's my cousin, guys. Phasia, I'm going to call you right back, babe, okay? okay? That's my cousin of my cousin that just passed. She just called me, so I didn't want to miss that call, guys. Sorry about that. I had my honey answer it. Okay, so listen. Listen, Linda, Listen. So when you are kingdom, type in the comments. Come on, talk back to me. I am kingdom. We are spending a whole lot of time talking about and teaching about things that are not uh, the gospel. It's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not. We are spending a lot of time talking about things that do not edify, that do not teach people how to submit to God. We are talking about gossip. We are talking about things that are not kingdom. It's things that are not building up people. It's things that are not edifying the body of Christ, teaching people how to yield to the Holy Spirit, teaching
teaching people how to walk out the plan of salvation, teaching people how to be disciple, not only by your pastor, but by the Holy Spirit. Because when you leave that Sunday service, listen, Linda, listen, you got to learn how to yield to the person of Holy Spirit. Your pastor cannot be there when Potiphar's wife is trying to seduce you. You got to say in within yourself, I can't do this thing against God. That's the moment we are stepping into all of that dead religion, all of preaching about people over the pulpit. We need to teach people about kingdom. Why? Because culture has infiltrated the church. You know what? We allowed a little leaven that leavened the whole lump. Mm. Mm. This is why 2020 manifested. We talked about before how in the book of Judges, when the children of Israel, you can look all through the book of Judges. The scriptures say this, when the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, the Lord turned them over. 2020 was a turning over. Ah. Uh. When the world did evil, when politics did evil, when entertainment did evil, when the church did evil, in the sight of the Lord, the scripture said this, the Lord turned the children of Israel over. Behold, I set before you uh, 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 blessings and cursing. Behold, I set before you to choose to obey God or not obey God. Life and death, blessings and cursing, life and death. When you choose life, you choose God's kingdom. When you choose cursing, you choose to disobey God. And that's the, the, the way of death. The, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. We understand that scripture to mean on the day of judgment. But this is what we're going to be judged by. And we're going to ultimately receive eternal life. But we can experience death on earth. You can experience death to purpose, death to promises, death to prophecy. How come you can't get that prophecy to, prophecy to manifest in your life? How come your children aren't saved? How come your mother is not saved? How come your brother is not saved? What are you doing, kingdom citizen? That they may see your what? Good works. Did you share this video and invite somebody on? Share it. This is a good one. So the kingdom is within you. So if the kingdom is within me, men should see my good works and begin to do what? Glorify the father. So I talked about on Sunday how we began to pray and intercede. And this young lady began to spit up demonic spirits. And these spirits got darker and darker. What was coming out of her as she began to be delivered, it got darker and darker. And then the moment of, of conversion happened when the Holy Spirit began to take up residence and she began, mm, thank you God, she began to speak with the language of Holy Spirit and guess what? Because Holy Spirit is within me and those that were listening, we heard the shifting in her tongues. First, the demonic spirits were talking. The demonic spirits were speaking and the demonic spirits were talking. And when Holy Spirit came inside of her, she began to speak with new tongues. My God, she began to rejoice. She began jumping and leaping for joy because the Holy Spirit had came in her and what was demonic came out of her. And God gave her the gift of joy. God gave her the gift of right stand with him. God gave her the gift of peace. She began to experience the peace of God. She began to feel better within her spirit. When you don't have peace, there is a disturbance a brande, in your union. When you don't have peace, there is a break in your commune with God. If peace isn't abiding in your home, in the atmosphere of your home, that means that the joy of the Lord and the communion of the Holy Spirit is not abiding. Come on, if you are saved and your husband is not saved, God has given you the power, sanctified wife, to begin to sanctify your home, begin to put a hedge of protection around your home, begin to convert demonic spirits. He has given you the power to transform in your home. He has 
Because guess what? What's in you? Tell me. What's in you? What's in you? Type in the comments. Let me know what's in you. What's in me? Scripture says, greater is he that is within you. Not prophet is Sherry Downs. He say, greater is he that is within prophet is Sherry Downs than he that is within the world. He said, greater is he that is in Claire. Greater is he that is in Annie. Greater is he that is in Shakista. Greater is he that is in Alyssa. Greater is he that is in Janie. Greater is he that is in Teresa. Greater is he that is in Yolanda. Greater is he that is in Renisha. Greater is he that is in Shanetta. Greater is he that is within you. Within you than he that is within the world. One thing we have to learn how to do in order to allow God's kingdom to take up residence. We have to learn, one, how to partner with Holy Spirit and how to deal with oppression. Because guess what? Every believer has oppression. What you do with it, that counts. The scriptures let us know, right? That we can uh, cast down every High thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ. Against us knowing who he is. Knowing who we are in him. Knowing the victory we have through Christ Jesus, the scriptures let us know. That we always triumph. Listen, if you have not yet purchased keys to unprecedented praying power, I put within this particular book things that I, myself, Sherry Downs, Prophetess Downs, had to learn and walk through with the Holy Spirit. And he began to give me keys on how to come against generational curses, set things in order, make way the way of the Lord. You're going to have to learn how to partner with the person of Holy Spirit. Begin to partner with God to see the manifestation of the kingdom of God. Listen, not only in your life, you know, I would get growing up. Listen, y'all, I would get so vexed and I still am vexed at this. When parents would come to church and not bring their children, they would be all on the altar getting it all. But guess what? Their children was at home with a babysitter. Their children were at home. They didn't bring their children to church. But guess what? When they got grown and their children are not in church, children don't know God, don't know the manifestation of the kingdom, didn't see them serving. They didn't have them there. I don't care if you fall asleep on this front row. You're going to be up in here and listen to the word. You coming because I'm teaching you how to respect the house of God, how to have God in your life. I'm setting a precedent. When God's kingdom is within you, it's in your home as well. Okay, I can go on and on. You guys know I could go on and on. If you have not yet purchased or pre-ordered, listen, our book signing is April 24th. Type that in the comments, April 24th. We will have it virtually inside my Facebook group. We're gonna have it virtually for COVID. Everybody can't come. Um, all that good stuff. People live far distances and want to attend. So we're got April 24th. Type that in the comments. April 24th is our book signing for keys to unprecedented praying power. If you have not pre-ordered that, listen, this book, it was a different book. One meaning because it was prayer. It was much warfare. Uh, Claire, Claire and I combed through this book and, and did greater edits than what the publisher did because we just wanted to make sure this book came out in the spirit of excellence. We have an addition to the book coming as well. Um, there's some special things that I'm giving for those that pre-order just from me, a personal side of this book. So don't purchase it on Amazon because right now I want to give that, uh, token of my love to those that pre-order it. If listen, guys, 
if you're in Kentucky or that vicinity area, you want to come to, um, what is it? Uh, tell me the name of the conference, Shakita. Uh, I can't think right now. To this conference, April 9th, 10th, and I believe 11th, post that link to the sign up in. It's in Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky. I'm speaking at that conference Friday night and Saturday. There's an all day event. I think it's April 9th and 10th. Uh, how much is the book? Yes, you can send a check. That is fine, Janie. That is fine. Uh, the book is $25. The pre-order book is $25. Uh, guys, if you have not purchased Don't Be Bullied by the Devil, we have that as well. And that book for purchase is $20. And Keys to Unprecedented Praying Power, which is our newest book, is $25. If you are looking for coaching and mentoring, you say, hey, Sherry, I love the way you teach. I love the way you um, um, share the gospel. I would love it if we could partner. Um, I do coaching and mentoring. I am a certified life coach um, through World Coach Institute, and I coach and mentor women. If you have not subscribed to Kingdom Touchdowns Podcast, you want to do that on your Apple device, Google Play, if you're an Android user. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, you want to do that because I'm going to do some side teachings on YouTube. So you kind of want to be a part of both of those because I'm going to do some um, videos on YouTube as well. We're uh, kicking things in gear and following after the Lord. If you have not read my two articles published on Char Charisma Magazine, you want to look at those articles because they are an encouragement to the body of Christ. Listen, I love you guys with the love of the Lord. Thank you for sharing. For all of you that are sharers and supporters, I appreciate you. For those that are partners with our ministry and you so tight and you so support financially for us to do the assignment that God has called us to do um, in the earth, I appreciate your tithe. I appreciate your seed. If ever my videos are a blessing to you and you felt feel led to sow a seed, you could do that at dollar sign for purpose coach. Dollar sign for purpose coach. That's cash app. If you feel led to be a blessing, you could do that at touchdowns ministries at gmail.com. That is through Zell and PayPal. Listen, I love you guys with the love of the Lord and I love you with my love. I truly do. I appreciate you guys sharing. I appreciate the support. I appreciate you getting on here live with me on Tuesdays and Fridays. I love you. I love you. I love you. Be blessed.